why don't airplanes run on nuclear power? And to be honest, that's a really good question. We have nuclear submarines, we have nuclear ships, we have nuclear aircraft carriers, so why don't we have nuclear powered plane? In the end of the day, if the plane crash, everyone will die, whether it's run on nuclear power or green energy. But that's it's not really a good sound scientific argument or an argument at all. This idea is not new. The idea of nuclear power plant was originally mentioned in 1944, during the time when the Manhattan Project was gained public momentary due to the potential nuclear energy. Even two years before that, in 1942, an Italian-American physician, Enrico Fermi, had pitched the idea of nuclear flights. He pitched this idea while he was serving on the Manhattan Project to build atomic bombs. As the World War II ends, the United States began to work on nuclear-powered flight. From 1946 to 1961, engineering strategists and administrators, you name it, they all were recruited to get the idea off the ground. The United States spent one billion back in the 50s just to attempt to answer this question. Engineers at new established US Air Force were awarded with the initial project to research method of welding atomic power for aircraft. The advantage for such investment were obvious. Theoretically, such a plane could stay in the air for weeks at a time. By 1951, they found a method that directly transferred heat from reactor and using it to propel an aircraft. This method was described in the 1963 government report, called Air entered through the compressor, is forced into the reactor and is heated by the full elements after passing through the turbine, where energy is extracted to drive the compressor, the heated hair is expelled at high velocity to the exhaustor nozzle. This idea makes sense on paper. The advantage of nuclear-powered airplanes are similar to those nuclear aircraft carriers. Both don't need to be refueled. Imagine a nuclear-powered bomber. It's the military dream come true. They can fly for days, target multiple enemy, they don't need to return to the military base. But there's some drawback on this love dream. With everything coming together on the technical end and funds made available by the government, it was time to face the key practical roadblocks. First, the reactor will need to be small to fit inside of the aircraft. This alone would release more heat than a standard reactor, which could melt the reactor and the plane along with it. Second, it will be extremely difficult to protect the crew and the passenger from the reactor's radiation. What's the point of having a full efficient plane if everyone inside it will die from radiation? Deep down we know that's not really a problem for the corporate America. Imagine someone pitched this idea. The refuel costs will be cut but people will be affected by high radiation so. You say cut the refuel costs, if so, please proceed. How about the radiation sir? Proceed. We are here to cut costs and make profit. That will be the conversation. In, the, in this corporation to make the reactor possible. Anyway, let's move to the other point. Third, weight. In order to protect the crew from radioactivity, the reactor will need heavy and thick layer of shielding. But for taking off, the plane need to be as light as possible and this itself make the challenge and the project even more difficult to accomplish. However, 
despite of all of those setbacks, engineers claim that the plane will not need to be refilled and that salon will offset the reactor and its heavy shielding. The United States spent 16 years romanticizing this idea with no actual perspective of this love story to happen. That's longer of most of my crashes. The Soviet Union pursued nuclear aircraft too, but they also ran into the same problem. In 1958, there were rumors that they achieved nuclear powered plane. But the Soviet debunked these rumors. You know, Russian don't lie. They debunked by saying, if we had flown an atomic powered aircraft, we would be very proud of, of the achievement and would let everyone know about it. Both Soviet Union and America were not able to overcome the problem of shielding and its weight. The military dream of nuclear airplane began to die slowly. In the late 1950s, the Einstein House administration cut the program budget. Nikita slash fund for the Soviet equivalent. By 1961, both countries began to cancel their project for nuclear powered airplane. Atomic flights seemed doomed. However, when everything seemed to end, the military did not give up on its dream. Military strategists were not satisfied. They could not let they dream be crushed by politicians, by science and hard fact. So they proposed they could use pilots that are close to dead. Basically, the Air Force would use old crew, people that are real old, old enough to die from natural cause before suffer from the radiation side effects. It's not big deal though, old people, old people are sacrificed first during nuclear apocalypse. So. What makes it different in this case? They are the one cleaning the nuclear mess anyway. Erman Khan, the author of On Thermonuclear War, shared the same opinion about old people being used in nuclear event. He bluntly stated in his book On Thermonuclear War, most of these people will die of other cows before they got cancer. That was only the first edition. I can wait what I trusted it come up for the second addiction. Despite of that, he was a brilliant man for his time anyway. He wasn't alone. The nuclear policy expert Leonard Weiss explained that such a proposal would have made radiation shield unnecessary and decreased the weight of the plane at the point that airplane could take off. It was a win-win, reduced the full cost and retirement expense. It was a great time to be old anyway. People were planning to use you just like a disposable. The image of irradiated elder pilots patrolling the world sky ready to unleash nuclear catastrophe somehow was difficult to sell to the general public. Matter of fact, it caused major outrage. It was considered a form of ageism against old people. The Eisenhower administration concluded that the program was unnecessary dangerous and too expensive because back then they already had nuclear missile. It was not really necessary to use nuclear power plane. On 28th of March of 1961, President John F. Kennedy canceled the program. Proposal for nuclear power plane have stopped since then. Plus the fear of radiation and lack of fun have keep all such ideas down. Quick talk. The question left is what if they succeed? What if they achieve nuclear power plane? If such a project was achieved, there are few things that would happen. There would be less airports and flight transit will not be real a thing. We would need to stop in Dubai for transit when the plane could fly for weeks. Which is a bit scared. If you think two hours flight is exhaustive, 
Just think about two days flight sitting in the same plane for hours and hours. Hell no, I don't want such a thing. Second, the cost of travel will be lower. People will be able to go anywhere easily. I mean easily than today. As a result, the world will be more connected than it is today. Third, the outcome of the World War II will be totally different, but it will not be beautiful for anyone. Lastly, we will be able to find people who lost their life from plane crash, but we will not be able to rescue their body because too much radiation and using old people to rescue dead people is even worse proposal.